Jason Bourne is cornered by a Berlin police SWAT team. With the help of the CIA, they've tracked him to the Hotel Brecker and have cordoned off the area. If they catch him, he's dead. At this point, he doesn't know how he's going to escape any more than we do, but he knows how he's going to figure it out. In this episode, I'm going to break down a scene from The Bourne Supremacy and show you how Jason Bourne practices decision-making under pressure and in high-stakes situations. Afterwards, I'm going to give you the chance to dissect and analyze a scene and see if you can figure out how Bourne is collecting information and making decisions under stress. By the end of this episode, you will know how to practice quick, razor-sharp decision-making under stress in high-pressure situations. Let's first talk about how Bourne makes decisions in high-stakes situations. Jason Bourne uses a decision-making process called the OODA loop. OODA is an acronym, one that stands for Observe, Orient, Decide, and Act. Developed by Colonel John Boyd of the United States Air Force to be used in dogfighting and other combat operations, the model is particularly useful in environments considered volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, or VUCA for short. I know, another acronym. It's the military. What are you going to do? In situations such as these, the ability to react faster than your opponent can make all the difference. Okay, so let's talk about how this OODA loop works. First, it always begins with an objective. What are you trying to accomplish in the decisions and actions that you take? They don't make mistakes. They don't do random. There's always an objective, always a target. The objectives and targets always came from us. Who's giving them to him now? Scary version? He is. Now, while there may be secondary or even tertiary objectives, it is always the primary objective that drives all other considerations. So with this in mind, let's return to the scene in which Jason Bourne is trying to escape from the Brecker Hotel. This is his primary objective. So with this primary objective set as his North Star, Bourne then begins the OODA loop with observe. In the observe phase, Bourne conducts a quick yet comprehensive scan of the environment to quickly gather as much information as he can. This includes scanning the physical environment for information, potential threats, and available resources, anything he needs to develop keen situational awareness. He makes his way out of the building, but that's just the beginning. He notices pretty quickly that the police see him and are calling for backup. So he needs to get away. I mean, far away. This means transportation. Here, Bourne sees something that can give him the information he needs. He looks at a train map. Here's the direction from which the police are coming. Checks out the schedule. And glances at his watch. This allows him to then move into the Orient phase. Here, Bourne makes sense of all the disparate information gathered during the observation phase and starts to develop a better understanding of his environment and how best to operate in it. Now, it's not always easy to delineate where the observe phase stops and the orient phase begins. What's more, as an outside observer, it's, it's hard to kind of see that, oh, look, he's moved into orient because... It's an internal thought process. Truth is, while observe and orient are two separate phases because we're collecting information, then making sense of that information, they sort of happen in concert. There's this really interesting scene from The Bourne Identity in which we see Jason Bourne stuck in the observe phase because he doesn't know how to orientate himself to the information. I can tell you the license plate numbers of all six cars outside. I can tell you that our waitress is left-handed and the guy sitting up at the counter weighs 215 pounds and knows how to handle himself. I know the best place to look for a gun is the cab of the gray truck outside. And at this altitude, I can run flat out for a half mile before my hands start shaking. Now, why would I know that? Okay, so back to our escape scene. 
With the time schedule, map, time, and direction from which the police are coming, Bourne has made sense of all the vital information and can now start moving into the decide phase. In this phase, he chooses a course of action based on the information gathered and observed and processed in Orient. The decision made, he then enters the act phase. Bourne runs to his selected train station, one that is away from the direction the police are coming from and aligns with the time and map and schedule that he has in his head. He makes his way to the train and jumps right on in. Now, this is where the loop aspect of the OODA loop comes into play. Because, after all, the environment is always changing. It is a dynamic environment. You need to constantly observe, orient, decide, and act until you have reached your primary objective. Rinse and repeat. Standing in the doorway, Bourne moves right into observe phase. He sees that the doors aren't closing. He looks at his watch. He also sees that the police are getting on the train. This is no longer an optimal situation. He continues to observe. He sees another train coming, one that isn't going to stop, and he sees a boat easing underneath the bridge below him. He orients this information, decides what to do, and takes action. Okay, so now it's your turn. Let's take a look at a scene from The Bourne Identity and see if you can recognize the OODA loop. Now remember, we're looking for signs that Bourne observes, orients, decides, and then acts. It always starts with a primary objective, so let's start with a little bit of background. Bourne is trying to find Treadstone. He doesn't know what Treadstone is. He doesn't know who Treadstone is. He doesn't know anything. He just knows that he needs to track this thing down. And in this scene, he's going head-to-head -head with another assassin, one that has been sent to kill him. Bourne suspects that this person has information that he needs, so... Once securing him, he moves right into interrogation. Who else is out here? Who else? How many you got with you? I don't walk alone like you. We always walk alone. Who do you mean? Who are you, Brian? Paris? Treadstone. Both of us. Treadstone? Which one? Paris. I live in Paris. What is Treadstone? They said go to Paris. Is <coughs> Treadstone in Paris? Who the hell are you? Hello, Jason. So, what are we into now? Come on, it only goes two ways, Jason. Either you come in and let us make this right, or we're gonna have to keep going until we're satisfied. You mean until you kill me? I can't fix this, Jason, if I don't know what the problem is. So tell me what we're into, and I'll do the best I can. Jason, listen, all we've been doing right enough. from- Enough, enough. 5.30 p.m., Paris, today, Pont Neuf. You come alone, you walk to the middle of that bridge, you take off your jacket, face east. I'll redial this number. Jason, wait. Okay, so there we are. You think you have some ideas? With that in mind, let's go ahead and take another look at this scene, and this time, I'll tell you what I observed. Who else is out here? 
Who else? How many you got with you? I work alone like you. We always work alone. Here, Bourne learns that they're alone and that the two of them have probably been trained in similar tactics. Who me? Who are you, Bourne? Paris? Treadstone. Both of us. This confirms that the assassin likely has information that Bourne needs. Treadstone? Which one? Paris. I live in Paris. Okay, this tells Bourne that they are both part of Treadstone and there are others as well. What is Treadstone? They said, go to Paris. Is Treadstone in Paris? Now, Treadstone may not necessarily be in Paris, but the assassin seems to believe that Paris is the place to go to get more information. Here, Bourne is observing and assessing the contents of the assassin's bag, especially the vehicle tracker. This really catches his interest. Okay, a phone. This is another potential source of information for the observe phase. Who the hell are you? Hello, Jason. Okay, Bourne just learns that they know who he is, which means they probably know more about him than he does. So, what are we into now? Come on, it only goes two ways, Jason. Either you come in and let us make this right, or we're gonna have to keep going until we're satisfied. You mean until you kill me? All right, he has now assessed and confirmed their objective. It's important to understand their objective, especially when his life is on the line. I can't fix this, Jason, if I don't know what the problem is, so tell me what we're into and I'll do the best I can. This tells Bourne that they as well are missing information and would likely be willing to do as he asks if it means getting that information. So here he's moving into Orient phase. He has a vehicle tracker, so if he can get close enough, he can track them to wherever Treadstone is and reach his primary objective. Jason, listen, all we've been doing right enough. from- Enough, enough. All right, he has gathered and processed enough information to make the decision. 5.30 PM, Paris, today, Pont Neuf. You come alone, you walk to the middle of that bridge, you take off your jacket, face east. I'll redial this number. Jason, wait. And now he's thinking about how best to act on the decision. Now, act happens in the, well, third act of the movie, so we're not going to go into that. And if you haven't seen the movie in a while, or at all, what's wrong with you? Go watch The Bourne Identity, a kick-ass film. Now, at this point, you may be saying to yourself, okay, this is interesting and all, but I'm not a fighter pilot and I'm not a trained assassin. When am I gonna use this? Remember, this process is especially effective in situations that are VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And you don't need to be a fighter pilot or assassin or a Navy SEAL to be in VUCA environments. We're in them quite often. I mean, sure, maybe lives aren't at stake, but then again, maybe they are. The OODA loop can be applied to responding to a medical emergency, dealing with a car breakdown in a remote location, surviving a natural disaster, responding to a home invasion, or in my case, in the middle of writing this script, having the power go out when it's 103 degrees outside. So go off and practice these techniques, maybe at your next family reunion or something where uh, it's a little bit of a weird environment and you need to respond in real time. Practice in these low risk situations so one day when you do find yourself in a high risk circumstance, you know how to respond immediately, quickly, and effectively. All right? Hey, so thanks a lot for joining today. And until we talk again, have a fantastic day.